Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel No Networks. Today we will see the overview of Sophos XG Firewall. Sophos XG Firewall provides unprecedented visibility into your network, users and application directly from all the new control center. You also get rich on-box reporting and the option to add Sophos iView for centralized reporting across multiple firewalls. Sophos Firewall is available in different flavors that are physical devices, virtual devices, and software. Physical devices. Sophos provides a range of physical devices to cater the need of all size of the businesses that is a small business to home user to enterprise. Virtual devices. Virtual network security devices can be deployed as next generation firewalls or UTMs and offer industry leading network security to virtual data centers. Security in a box setup for organization and office in a box setup. So just to recall in our previous tutorial, which was a lab tutorial, a hands-on practice, we downloaded a Sophos XG firewall ISO image file from Sophos website, imported a downloaded packages into a VMware workstation, the one installed on our physical host. Then we configure VM network and assign those VM network to network adapters. Just let me let me take you to the network design. This was a network design which we have seen in our last tutorial. We have configured VM network one, VM network two on our VM workstation. VM network one was assigned to port A, which is designated as a LAN port, and a port and VM network two was assigned to port C, which will we will be designating as a DMZ port. Port B is bridged to your physical host. We have done the IP configure network configuration for VM network 1 and VM network 2 in our last video. So thereafter what we did is we have changed the default IP address of the Sophos XG firewall port A which was 172.16.16.16/24. We changed this default IP address to 10.1.1.200/24 as per our network design. Thereafter, we access the firewall through web browser by typing https colon double slash the port A LAN interface IP address which was 10.1.1.200 colon the port number which was 4444 this one. After typing this in the browser, we were navigated to the web admin where we have entered the username and password and we can see the screen. Finally, we completed our initial configuration and registered appliance by creating a Sophos ID. After our first login to the appliance in our last tutorial, we saw the page which you are viewing on the screen right now. It's called an admin console. So let's talk about the administrative interfaces. Devices can be accessed and administered through an admin console. Admin console is a web-based application that an administration administrator can use to configure, monitor and manage the device. Command line interface. Command line interface CLI console provides a collection of tools to administer, monitor, and control certain components of the devices. The third comes the Sophos firewall manager. It distributes Sophos devices can be the distributed Sophos devices can be centrally managed using a single Sophos firewall manager device, SFM device. The SFM device we will be deploying in the coming tutorial. So let's see one by one, Admin when you talk about the administrative access, the one which you are seeing the GUI, which you, it is accessible through a web browser, this is called as a admin console. When you talk about the command line interface console, CLI console, in this what you have to do is, if you have a PuTTY installed in your host machine, you can simply open that and type the IP address of our LAN interface that is 10.1.1.200 on port 22. If you don't have, simply you have to download it from the internet putty software. So the host name will be 10.1.1.200 on port 22. You will click on open. It is asking you login as you will say admin. You will give the password. And you can see you are logged into the appliance through CLI. So an administrator can connect and access a device through HTTPS that is through the web browser 
or you can tell it or SSH services can be used to access the appliance. Depending on the administrator login account profile used for access, an administrator can access number of administrative interfaces and admin console configuration pages. The device is basically shipped with one administrator account and four administrator profile by default. So let's move on to the profile. Over here, you have to go to device access. And you can see this that by default, you have one administrator account and four administrative profile by default that are auto audit admin, crypto admin, HA profile, security admin. Let's talk about the system panel. Going to control center on the dash dashboard side, system panel displays the real time state of device services. VPN connections, WAN links, and performance as well as number of days since the device is up and running. Status is displayed as an icon and colored icon are used to differentiate statuses. On clicking the icon detail, the information of the services is displayed. The icons and their various status are performance widget. You can see on the screen the performance widget. This one. The performance let's click on this and it will give you the performance details of the appliance then comes the service widget this one click on the service widget and it give you the details about the services similarly you have interface widgets this one then you have VPN connection widgets after VPN connection widgets, you have CPU widgets, bandwidth, and session. When we will be doing a hands-on lab in the coming tutorials, we will be having much more details on this, definitely. So the current activity session provides information about the live IPsec, SSL IP, and wireless connections to the devices. The next tab, we are talking about the current activities. This provides you the detail about the live IPsec connection, live users and wireless connection to the devices. So let's talk about one by one. Live users. When you talk about live users, it displays a list of all the users currently connected to the devices. Now as if now we have not done any kind of configuration, nor any devices connected, just it's a purely a theoretical lecture where we are under, trying to understand and get trying to understand the overview of the SG firewall. So in the coming lectures, when we will be deploying uh, the different, different types of labs at that time, we will see uh, when we will integrate this uh, Sophos firewall with the Active Directory or uh, with the local user authentication. At that time, you will see how the live users will be displayed whenever the user is connected. Next come the IPsec connection. It will display a list of live IPsec connection. Then comes the remote users, the SSL VPN users, when will they will be connecting it will be shown over here. Live connections, it will display a list of the live IPv4 connection on the devices. And as if now we don't have any policy, we have not configured much more, it is giving you the general connections and all. Let's talk about diagnostic. Reporting uh, is the one option. This I have kept for the further videos when we will be doing the reporting, when we will be learning about the reporting, when we will be configuring the report reports at that time, we will have an overview on this as well. And of course, for the zero day production also as per the lab. Next come the diagnostic. This menu allows checking the health of your device in a single shot. Information can be used for troubleshooting and diagnosing problems found in your device. So use this menu to configure below details like tools. When we talk about tools, what it does, it views the statistics to diagnose the connectivity problem, network problem and test network communications. It assists in troubleshooting issues such as hangs, packet loss, connectivity, discrepancies in the network. Also troubleshooting report can be generated to debug system problems. So when we talk about the tools, using this tool page, 
you can view the statistics to the diagnose to diagnose the connectivity problem network problem and test network communications it assists in troubleshooting issues such as hangs packet loss connectivity discrepancies in the network the page covers ping as you can see over here ping then comes trace route the next is name lookup route lookup and consolidated troubleshooting report so like let's say for example if you need to check the reachability of any ip addresses from this particular uh, appliances so let's uh, just try to google dns you can go by interfaces by interfaces but now we are in the initial phase and we haven't configured much more on this firewall we're just over looking after the overview so we will see by default so we are trying to ping 8.8.8.8 google dns so since uh, your WAN interface is bridged to this, so the traffic is uh, routed from the port 2 of the firewall and you can see that uh, you are able to ping 8.8.8.8. .8 Similarly, you can trace the path for the Google DNS or you can try for the name lookup. Additionally, uh, you can do the route lookup and console you can consolidate the troubleshooting report. We haven't configured any DNS server IP. This IP 192.168.0.1 it has taken from my gateway router. So we will be changing this IP address as well. And definitely when we will be doing a lab, we will be trying uh, multiple combinations over here for the better understanding. This is just an overview. Next comes the system graph. It is used to view graphs per, uh, pertaining to the system related activities for different time intervals. Next comes URL category lookup. It is used to search whether the URL is categorized or not. So guys, I'm just giving you the overview over here. And when we will be doing a lab, we will have a detailed uh, analysis on each and every topic. Next comes a packet capture. This, it displays the packet details on the specified interface have to configure some basic configuration and you can see how the packets are captured and all this also we will see in the supporting lab then comes the connection list it provides current or live connection snapshot of your device in the list form as you can see over here some of the entries are being shown uh, it is shown that the time is so and so connection id in interface is port a and the source IP is 10.1.1.1, destination IP 10.1.1.200. And the last tab in the diagnostic comes the support access. This page you can use to grant support staff temporary access to your device. Whenever you are trying to raise a ticket at that time, you can use this option. You can open the support ticket, enable the support access and so on. And thereafter, you have access setting whether you want to grant access for how much time one day one week and so on access status will be shown finally when the support tunnel is established so that's all uh, for uh, today guys in the next tutorial which will be a purely a hands-on lab practice with a short presentation we will be learning how to manage the firewall objects uh, we will be explaining about what zones are and identify the default system zones we will be configuring the basic networking Thereafter, we will manage the device access and certificates. We will identify the different types of routing pro protocols supported on the XG firewall. We will be configuring static routing. Thereafter, configuration of zones and interface. We will be creating a static routes, configuration of the DNS. And we will start with our firewall rules. So that's all for today, guys.